tonight I'm going to one of the scariest places in the world. Not only is it scary and filled with active spirits, but there's things here that have physically attacked people. Uh, no thanks. And if that's not scary enough, I'm going to be spending the entire evening here alone. Today I'm traveling far, far from home, with no friends, no family, 100% completely alone. While visiting some of the scariest, most haunted places in the world. Everyone has fears, and so do I. Some things feed off those fears, becoming prevalent when you're on one's tide. I will attempt to explain the unexplainable while facing my own fears. I may have an answer while I embark. One thing is certain, I'm alone in the dark. I can't believe you're doing this by yourself. <laughs> In the early 1800s, this was called Warm Springs Hotel. People would travel here through stagecoach. You'd have kids, women, men. The legislature came in, had a big party. Well, they trashed the hotel. So the state had to buy it for 80,000. So when we bought it, we ended up making gel cells in the hotel. Now it's not a hotel, it's actually a gel house. Eventually the place burnt down. That's when they started using the foundation and building the prison you see today. Between 1862 and 64, if you killed someone, hang or shoot, you had those options. This is all part of Mexico coming up into Nevada. They did bring women in here. Eventually, they closed the women down in 1958, and they moved them to their own facility. We were hearing all kinds of knocks and banging, some doors slamming and stuff like that, and we could hear like walking, and nobody was in there, it was just us. We had a, a board across the cell blocks propped up, and the music box was there and we had it going and we were asking if anybody was there and the music box started going off. I picked up my flashlight and I shined it down the hallway and I see this black mass down at the corner of between the bars and the floor coming towards me. When my light went on it, I thought I would see some glowing eyes because usually with animals, that's the first thing that you see. There were no glowing eyes, but my light actually didn't pass through it. So it was stopping my light. I started to step back and I'm like, oh my God, do you, see, do you guys see that? And I was in front of them, so they couldn't see it. It was like, you guys, you guys, I just saw something. It was like this black mass, but it was, it didn't have any legs or anything. But at first that's what I thought it was. Whatever we have here, it's, dark, it's black, it's a blob, and it breaks up like mercury. You'll see it going around, and then you'll see it just break up and take off. She was doing a little session and talking to the spirits, and there was this black mass that appeared above her. And I said, that's exactly what I saw. And apparently other people have seen that as well. And I think that's one of the prevalent apparitions that's there, and I don't know what exactly it is. I asked if they had some footage of this dark entity they were talking about, and now I'm regretting it. While investigating the woman's cell block, Susan was asking the spirit some questions. Come on, you can talk to this. Pay attention to the top left corner. You can see a hand-like anomaly almost reaching out to her. I thought it may have been a person, but there was no one behind Susan here, making this unexplained phenomenon truly terrifying. There are times when I'm walking in here, when I'm by myself, I can't believe you're doing this by yourself. I ran down at the outside. I just dropped a group off up in the cell house and I start screaming, Chris, 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 because I saw a shadow down here moving. Hello? Chris? 
Chris. And he didn't answer me, and I kept walking. I said, okay, guys, go up there and mess with those guys. As I took that corner and I got this on video, you'll see a mist go by me. And if you stop it, it's a skeleton face. I've been told it, it's a Native American. We were basically setting up all of our equipment. We set up another music box in the cell block facing the opposite direction. Got it set up and I went down to put the rim pod down at the other end and I came around the outside of the cell block and as I'm walking down the cell block towards them, I'm walking and all of a sudden I hear this voice whisper to me, Do you want me? And it came from like up above and it was like almost like somebody who's like because I'm 5'11 and it was somebody who was like 6'5 just said that in my ear and I stopped and I was like did you guys just whisper something and because I could hear them talking and they stopped talking and they said what and I, I, I basically was like did you guys whisper something what did no we didn't say did you say do you like me and they're like no why would we say that and at that point I kind of just like started walking faster toward them and I told them this story and it still gives me goosebumps like right now telling it I feel it on the back of my neck. So if you feel sick, if you feel faint, make sure you get out. Have you ever had anybody faint? Uh, yes, and attacked on the upper yard. He had to carry him out. Just kind of grabbed the guy that I thought was getting beat up because he looked like he was getting beat up and I just threw him over my shoulder and walked back out with him. He was all banged up, all bruised up all around his midsection and it looked like he had a handprint, like a definite handprint around his neck where somebody was holding him. And he kept saying while he was up there, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And it was an ex-cop and he said, he was kind of going, come on, mess with me, I'm Chinese, what are you gonna do? And all of a sudden on the SLS you could see these stick figures beating him up and he hunched over and he had bruises he had his neck all bruised oh yeah i'm sure there's bad spirits here you know and i'm sure there's good ones saying hey susan get away from this so susan and the team they were all inside the women's they're in different cells i think one of them was in the bullpen i think one of them was at the very end of the hall and they asked me to go out into the hallway and i'm just kind of standing there kind of spacing out a little bit because it's pitch black in that hallway and I'm just standing there, and then I hear them kind of freaking out. There's a shadow between us, there's a dark figure between us. And then I kind of looked back, because I was looking towards the death chamber, because I heard something just kind of like feet shuffling over there. So I looked back, I was like, okay, I don't see anything. And they're like, well, it's coming back. It moved from blah, blah, blah. So I turn around, and all of a sudden the hallway behind me is pitch black. It is just darkness, and all I see is like this pair of eyes in front of me. Of course, I just stood there for a second, and I was like, okay. Yeah, my blood pressure just went up. My heart rate is uh, going crazy, and I was like, hi. So I did not know how to react. Well, the investigator, she looks back. As I'm coming down the stairs, I'm coming behind everybody, and she just like, she's like, Chris, stop. I was like, oh, no. That's behind me. And she's like, yeah. She's like, Do you want to turn around? I was like, no, let's, we can keep going. It's all right. I'll check on him later. He gets scared. Go. Do they feed off fear? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You guys, they just did this. Just did that. Alright, well, it's gonna be a great night. So I guess you guys are down to party tonight, huh? Good luck. That's all I gotta say. Omar. <laughs> so I'll give you your safety briefing now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, whatever it is you think you see in here, it may or may not be real. All these steel bars, though? They're definitely real. Don't run. We're gonna lock the door. Really gonna lock me in, huh? Yeah. I knew I was gonna be alone, but I didn't expect to actually be locked in this place. Like who would have thought paying to be locked in a prison? I am now. Alright. Oh yeah. Oh gosh. It hasn't even been a minute yet, and I'm already rethinking this entire idea. I'm just gonna make the best of it though, and see how long I last through the night. Ooh, some weights. Oh gosh, this is so. Oh yeah. Not lifting that. I can't lift anything here, and I work out. These guys were tough. I don't get scared very many places. Hey, I'm lying. I do. Okay, I do get scared. We're not gonna let them know. Now, I do have some brand new merch. It says alone, and on the back, I'm gonna have to get another shot. So I did take a couple photos 
of what this looked like during the day. I'm hearing all kinds of noises. Now, this property goes really far back. Okay, we're only going to explore this front area and I promise there's going to be a lot. If I have the balls to come back here again, I have no idea what's going to happen tonight. We're going to spend a lot of time filming. Make sure you keep your eyes open. Wear some headphones when you watch this video and watch it in the dark. I think it should add to the ambiance because you and I are here alone. I mean, I'm here alone, but you're technically here with me too, which makes this a little easier for me. Well, not really. I'll come back here if all goes well tonight. I don't get attacked or something like that. You guys ready? Now, whatever is here seems to really like Susan. Anytime she's in here, like she was getting touched. Actually, as we were, because I did get a tour of the place. That way I kind of knew some of the history. You know how the drill goes. I, don't, I didn't just want to come here. Now, there are some parts of this video that you're going to see that she just kind of said, hey, look, I'm not going to tell you about this and I'm just going to see how, how, it, how it feels to you. As she was showing me around, she kept getting touched. Things were happening all around her. Something just pushed on my back. I'm sorry. See, when this stuff happens, lights, they start hovering on me and touching me. At one point, she even, it looked like to me, she lost her balance, but she didn't. She got pushed. And Chris, the other volunteer that was here and sharing some of his experiences, and the guy that saw like the eyes, he told me that sometimes you gotta be careful because some of the inmate spirits will push you. All right, I just swapped out microphones. That way we can catch more of what I hear naturally. From time to time, I will be silent. Just wanna warn you. And from time to time, I'm gonna talk, but hey, let's put our listening ears on. Where we're at right now, I would call it a cafeteria, but it's called culinary. And this is where they would have their meals. Chris did tell me that some of the spirits in here are mischievous and especially inside here and culinary, they like to play jokes. Now, right where I'm standing, I'm gonna lower. Right there, someone bled out. Yep, that's right. Supposedly in 1976, it was a really bad riot. And if you know anything about prisons, I mean, even till this day, it's very segregated. Like, you know, you kind of stick with your kind. You know, Hispanics with Hispanics, whites with whites, blacks with blacks. Here, also, there was a great deal of Native American, from what I hear. And sometimes there were like race wars. The one in 1976 was racially motivated and two gentlemen died. One was named Harold, from what I hear, and he passed away right below us here and bled out. God rest his soul. Well, really sorry about what happened to you, Harold. So this is the kitchen area. And it was a really interesting. Oh my gosh. It is dead silent in here. Susan was telling me 
about a picture that she got of this great creature. And I'm trying to find that area. The picture was terrifying, by the way. And she calls it an alien. I know we have two types of aliens. I think I have a gray. I think we have almost like a bug die lizard. I had a friend that called me and said, hey, and I said, what's going on? Did you see a UFO? And I was joking with her and she goes, well, yeah. And I said, what? She goes, yeah. She goes, we were coming down Geiger as we went into Virginia City. We saw a deer stand there just looking. So we pulled over, we got out, we looked down and there's a silver spinning thing just hovering, no noise. And I said, what'd you do? She goes, we jumped back in the car. We went to Virginia City and all the cops laughed at us. I said, okay, take me up there. And I knew she was telling the truth, very Catholic. She didn't believe in this stuff. So we went up there and she couldn't sleep for two weeks. So when we went up there, there was a perfect burn round spot. And we hiked down there and I'm going, what the hell, this is a UFO. And this is in the 80s, okay? So we didn't have our cell phones. And I picked up some stuff, carried it to the car. And later that week, I took it to UNR. And the guy comes in and he goes, you got more of that in your car? I said, yeah. He goes, get it out. The radiation is way above what's supposed to be. We went back there to that spot. It was gone. So somebody knew what we found and they covered it up. So yeah, there's UFOs here. We see them in the skies all the time. I believe we have portholes here. This land with the warm springs, you know, water brings energy. I want to say it was, oh yeah, it was right over here. to even look inside this window in case it comes back now as you can see this this does not open it's completely locked there's something in there hello Sounds like walking upstairs. It's not raining. Those are knocks. Who's knocking?
one thing that I completely forgot to do. I forgot to say a prayer. I figured I'll do that. In Jesus' name, amen. You have no idea how much safer I feel after saying that prayer. But yeah, this is what I want to show you. See, it says, alone on the back. Oh gosh, I got goosebumps, I got goosebumps. Can you do that knock again? I promise you it's not the volunteers. They locked me in here. And we have the whole place to ourselves for the rest of the night tonight. One of the things they've mentioned when people come here to visit is some people panic because this place is so massive and they get lost. And I mean, they don't just panic because of that, but because of how active the spiritual activity is here. So. Sometimes you'll hear shuffling. You'll hear like, almost like boots walking. I have no idea how to get to the prison part. Uh, exit, exit. getting drained super fast. The cafeteria wasn't shy when it came to activity. I was a little curious and wanted to make sure the volunteers weren't messing around with me, so I gave them a call. Also, I'm a bit lost. I'm in like the cafeteria or culinary, right? Yeah. Which, by the way, are you sure that you guys aren't outside messing with me? Oh no, we're right. I wish you could see us. We're sitting. Okay, you guys are in the office. Right here. Yeah. All right, We're not I heard like a really loud bang outside and then I was in the, I guess where they prepare food and yeah. it, it sounded like something was walking above me. Like it was like a... Yes, yes, that's what the guys were getting yesterday too. Yeah, it's like a... And there's no, there, that's only a roof. There's no second level. There's no second level to that? No, they thought there was a second level too. I that for sure it. thought it was a second level. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. I'm kind of second thinking this whole being alone thing. I'm kind of... I don't get scared very easy like this, but this, this place really... It's kind of scary. Do you want Chris to come out there? No, nah, no. Nah, I got to do this. I got to do this. Okay. I got to okay. just do this. Well, gonna, just, but thank you. Okay, just know this. That there's nothing... Well... Except for the one guy that got hurt. We've never, we've been out there multiple times. And yeah, there's activity and things like that. They're going to mess with you. But they're not going to hurt you. You're, you're going to be okay. Just talk to them. Okay. Hi, guys. There you go. I'm just another inmate, you could say. Because yeah. I technically did get locked in a prison. That's right. So, can I get to the prison part from the cafeteria area? Okay, so you're back in the back area of the... I'm where the we were doing the interviews and stuff. There is something creepy about the kitchen area. Yes, there was a lot of activity in there. No kidding. Okay. Bye. I'll be back later, hang out with you. All right, so where, where do I go? So my friend Tammy is giving me directions because I am kind of lost right now. I thought I came this way the last time, but maybe I didn't. All right, this is where we got going. Yeah. Oh gosh, oh something just like, something just opened the door. As I was getting ready to open it, something like sucked in the door. 
Unless there's a draft or something. Uh, I think I got it. I think I got it. This is where this is where I wanted to be. Okay, perfect. I mean, kind of. I mean, <laughs> but. Just follow, follow the cell block all the way down. Don't forget, towards the end of the cell block on the right hand side is the cell that has the bedding and everything in it. It's all dressed up. Okay. And then when you go upstairs, you're on level A right now. Then you'll go to B. B the, will take you into the depth chamber and the woman's section. All right. Can I ask you a question? E for blog. Yeah. Do many people do what I'm doing? <laughs> by himself? Getting lost? Yeah. No. But getting lost? Yes. But by himself? George does. And then he cries later. Yeah, please. So you're saying that the last person that did what I'm doing, being in here alone, left crying. All right, well, hey, I'll call you if I need you, all right? Thanks. I hope. Bye. Oh, gosh. walking right now is where the CEOs aka correctional officers would be walking and show you this this is really cool a lot of people took showers in there so in here they have it set up as if there's actual inmates here like this is what it would look like it's pretty cool Riding with R.I.P. The Bros Club Guide to America. Cool. Yeah, you don't get a nice comfy pillow in prison or a comfy bed at that. I mean, it's, oh gosh, that's, that is terrible. I, oh. We are alone in the dark. So these are pretty much set up very similar to when we were down on the first floor. What's up guys? Hopefully I'm not here too late disturbing you. 
just here to document your story, that's all. I mean, no disrespect. This is closed off. Bruh. Legit looked like an inmate was sleeping up here. Right now as I was walking by. It was like a shadow of something sleeping. Whoa. Okay, I saw that in the corner of my eye. Not sure if the camera caught that. But that was cool. Move on. Should we go up again? Uh, we're gonna go over here. There's a lot of activity that happens in the B block. This is where we were just a minute ago. We may get lost in here. Sorry, sorry. So we're in a really old school part of the jail or prison. It's pretty cool to check this out. Hear some noises. Interact with whatever's here. Is it this one? See how there's stuff written up there? That's written with toothpaste. That's how they used to do their art. There is some pencil, like graffiti on the walls, but yeah, the white stuff you see is toothpaste. Pretty cool. Kid Rock.
You may see some stuff in this video. Please let me know if you do, because that black blob has been seen so many times. And we're on the floor where that video that I showed you that Susan encountered, in fact, tons of TV shows have called her over that video clip, wanting it. And yeah, you guys get to see it here first. So yeah, big shout out to Susan and Chris and my homie Tammy too, and Jason. Because without them, this video would not be possible. Without you too, it wouldn't be possible. Some of these little doors. Okay, this is where that video was taken, where that blob was seen. So where we're at right now is where they would kind of prepare some of the women for going inside of their cells. What's up with this doll over here? What's your name? Are you here, Blob? At this moment, my camera gave me a warning that the battery was low, but I was hearing and seeing so much around me, I didn't want to miss anything. Big mistake. Because of the sudden shutoff from the battery drain, the last bit of footage was nowhere to be found. I was upset because I thought I never would find this footage again, but I was able to recover it. I just lost about 45 minutes of footage because my battery died. And in the middle of like when your battery dies and you're recording onto an SD card, it can damage footage. Should have known because my battery was showing that it was getting low, but I just, I kept hearing so much. Dude, these are way nicer than the men's. A lot roomier. Not sure why there's a ball there. Really upset about my footage. Did you drain my battery? Causing me to lose 45 minutes of footage. It's okay if you did. I'm not mad at you. Yeah, I think the camera was right here 
and Susan was standing right up against those bars right there. Right before I lost my footage, I heard like a man, or I don't know, there was something in here. Can you do that noise again for me? I kind of lost it. It's okay if you can't. So we're on the second floor. I mean, I've been exploring for quite a bit. But I wanted to come up here because this is where people see that blah. come here super easy to get lost I mean I what the fuck was that hello I'm not scared you just kind of startled me a little bit can you make another noise for me Just heard like a bang on the window or something right now. All right. I'm gonna walk around a little bit more. If you were on my live stream on my live channel, I did go completely lights out with my IR camera. Quality wasn't the best, but I caught some amazing evidence. And a lot of people were interacting in the comments, seeing and hearing things that I wasn't even seeing or hearing. After exploring around a bit, I went back to the cafeteria to grab one of my lights. Upon doing so, I felt something there and I didn't want to scare it away, so I turned off all the lights. This is my infrared camera that can see in the dark. Keep in mind that I'm walking in complete darkness. Dude, it's so dark in here. Like, let me turn this off. Like, that's, that's how dark like it is in here. Just to give you an idea. All right, that's infrared. I'm gonna sit right here, in the dark. Gosh, this is really hard. Wish I had a third arm. Oh, oh! Okay, the, I didn't touch that.
Okay. Are you there? Somewhere? Are you sitting there somewhere? There is something sitting on that table. Can you touch that that ball again? Or the cat balls? Anyone get shanked in here? <gasps> right after I asked that question. I'm really sorry that you got shanked. I just looked up right now, not looking at the camera, and uh, that scared the shit out of me, not gonna lie. And my battery is going up. Don't push me. Don't push me. Something just push me. I'm your friend, dude. Come on, man. You ain't gotta push me. Stop pushing me! You just hurt my knee! Alright. I'm here. Here, footsteps. I hear you knocking. Did you just knock on the door? Okay, we can do it again. Are you walking over there? I just heard your footsteps. Bro, I just caught some legit footsteps in the dark, but ain't nobody here with me. Nobody, 100% alone. Oh, what the freak? Okay, I'm not scared, I'm just excited. I am pretty excited. You know when you're like playing hide and seek? And like you hide and the person looking for you, like they're looking for you and while you're hiding, you're so excited that you have to pee like really bad. That's me right now, but I'm not scared. I'm just excited. What you all can see is all I can see right now. I mean, to me, it's just, Darkness. I did see a black, like, almost like a, a ball or something. Oh, dude, I just, I caught like an orb or something on the corner of my screen. I think I've been in here. Uh, no thanks. No thanks.
No way. This is really cool in here. I'm gonna need some SIGs and some head and shoulders. Is that cool? Plus, I get out in like 15 years. Okay, yeah, that's right. Oh, make that 15 years, three months, and four days. Now, people in jail, they usually pay each other like in cigarettes. That's kind of like a thing. All right. I'm on the wrong side, by the way. I'm where the family members would usually be. And I know one of these phones work because that blob sure is scary. Do not shake out your stuff here. Huh, I wonder what that means. I was told that some of the spirits here don't like being disturbed really late at night. You know, because morning comes early for these guys and the sun is coming right through those windows. There's no mini blinds. There's no room darkening shades. Tell you what, this is one of the cleanest prisons I've ever been to. That with Brushy Mountain. Uh, see, I've already been through some of these areas, kind of bummed. I think I'm lost. I think. <laughs> What's in here? I just heard a noise coming from in here. I don't know why. First thing that comes to mind when I see this right here that I'm looking at is abuse. I don't know why, but I feel it. I got this like just in the pit of my stomach. Really bad things happened just beyond this gate right here. Really bad things. Now here's the thing. The volunteers didn't tell me every single thing about each location inside this prison. Because they said, hey, you're gonna feel certain things. And we want, we want it to kind of be a surprise. Be kind of candid. And that's what I'm feeling in here.
I feel some abuse in here too. If I was in prison, I'd be in here cutting people's hair. It's a barber shop. That's pretty cool. Nice barber chair too. I used to be a barber. Any barber spirits up in here? love exploring alone but a big place like this not gonna lie oh something just touched my head something just touched my head something just touched my head like my hair it was like i love coming places alone like this but the only thing i would say i dislike about it is that i don't know my way around I mean, I got a tour of the place beforehand. Something just touched my leg. Something touched my leg right now. One thing is going to a creepy place, but it's another thing when you start getting touched and pushed around by an unknown force. This is the fourth or fifth time I've been touched by something. Most would think it's evil, but that's not always the case. Sometimes things can hurt you, but sometimes I feel these spirits are trying to show themselves or get your attention. Something touched my leg. Hey, it's cool. It's cool. Touched my leg. That is something that will happen here. I haven't had that in a long time. What's in here? I couldn't really see anything. Maybe the camera did. tell you an awesome story about where we're at right now. There's bullet holes here somewhere on the walls. Some of the inmates got a hold of a CO and asked, I mean, they had a gun, they got his gun and they had the gun to his head and they were like, look, I don't wanna kill you. I just need your clothes and he exchanged clothes with the CO, locked them up in the cell. And as soon as that happened, there was a shootout between the FBI and a couple, couple inmates. And there's some bullet holes somewhere on the walls. I can't find them right now. This place is huge. Like I said, I get lost real easy. It is so past my bedtime right now. And I'm sure it is for these inmates. It's exactly three o'clock in the morning in here, which would be six o'clock in the morning for me in Florida.
You're not allowed to follow me. Nothing evil can follow me home if there's anything evil here. I hear that there's not, but there is a possibility you never know. Did spend a majority of my live streaming here. And there's so much activity in here, oh my gosh. I'm back. Just want to say hello to you. And also want to say goodbye. Are you happy with my visit here? you knocking can you set off those cat balls again that was kind of cool Man, they went off like maybe three times it was So this is the outdoor, you know, recreational area. There's picnic tables. There's some weights. And of course, basketball. Wonder how many fights were out here. This prison is massive. For me to visit every single building and explore everything here, would probably take me three days, three days. I mean, just this alone, there's some things that I that I missed. Prison hospital, we got a little tour earlier. It was off camera and I got some of the history of the place from Susan and she told me right off the bat, she was like, hey, do you feel anything here? And I did. My stomach was hurting, it was a bad feeling and she was like, I knew it. That's what a lot of people feel here. In this area right here, they made this for one particular inmate because he was causing so much trouble. He was a Native American. I mean, he, he went crazy. They had to put him pretty much in a cave. I mean, look at this. This, this is all like razor blades up there. They didn't want him getting out of here. I mean, you got to be pretty pretty messed up person. Wow, look at that. Be cool to go in there, but I say it's not safe. I see you. You walking up behind me? Looking back at this footage, when I took a peek inside the cave cell, I noticed a face looking at me from a distance, and then it disappears. I got attacked a couple times, to the point where I had to tell whatever was attacking me to chill out, and then it stopped. But it got me like twice, and one of the spots that it got me, I'm going to show you right now. And it was where I heard evil woman laugh or a scream or something. I don't know, but it was right over here. Close it 
do this. Can you laugh for me again? Can you do that scream again for me? This is around the area that I ended my stream. Yeah, this is old school right here. I mean, you see stuff like this in the movies where the prisoner is talking to their girlfriend on the other side or their mom. Now I tested one of these phones out and it still is functional. I think it's this this one right here. In case you're wondering, 2012 was the last time this prison was used. This was a viewing area for the inmates that they would execute. I believe here at the Nevada State Prison was like probably one of the first ever death by gas chamber. executions they had and they would give you a choice they would ask you hey you want to be shot or do you want to be hung and those were some of the things that were done here like this guy right here John Hancock you can look him up he was hung in 1925 well, here's some of the executions by hanging and what they were in for murder it shows the victims names Let's not laugh at this gentleman's name, okay? Because I know that there's probably guys out there that don't like their names. His mother named him Carol. And he hated his name. He got teased for it because it's a popular name for women. I've, I've heard Carrie, you know, being like a unisex type name. Well, supposedly he became a woman hater because of this and he killed quite a few women. Murder 15 people? Dude, what the heck? Yeah, you definitely deserved it. Las Vegas, California, Texas, and Iowa. Yeah, they used to do lethal injections. Right inside there. Now, the whole gas chamber death. Went to the Missouri State Penitentiary and learned all about it because they had one there. You really see these guys, like once they release these gases, they, it, it's terrible. It like eats them from the inside out and they're struggling to breathe and it's, it's a terrible way to go. Lethal injection, probably not as bad. You know, out of everywhere that I have been 
inside of the Nevada State Prison. And I know you're gonna think it sounds weird. This is probably the most peaceful place. And hopefully this resonates with you while you're watching, especially after, you know, what I told you. I mean, like that guy Carol that killed 15 people, there had to have been family members here that wanted to see justice served and they got peace from it. I mean, sad as it may be, but you know, an eye for an eye. So they got peace here. Some people have witnessed, like if they get close to the glass, they'll see another person on the other side of the glass looking at them. Haven't tried that yet, but yeah, there's a really strange picture of what they believe is Carol Cole. Carol Cole is his name. Yeah. Sense of peace in here. Everywhere else though? Not so much. Sorry about the noise. This place kind of drains you a little bit. I'm lost. Okay. Where do I go? Let me go over here. Okay, I know where those bullet holes are. They're right over here. Hello, boys. Your favorite Omar is in the house. You in here? One thing I'm so upset about, I was walking by one of these cells and it looked like there was somebody sleeping in one of the beds. I went in there, nobody was there. It was like a, like a shadow of someone sleeping. I don't have the footage. And, oh. Oh, here it is. Check it out. There's the bullet holes right there. Like they got in quite a shootout. Look at that. Those are all bullet, bullet holes or bullet markings because this is solid concrete. And that was a shootout with the FBI. No one was killed from what I was told. I could be wrong, but where we're at right now, probably one of the worst places in prison to be. 
I mean, could you imagine not being able to see the sun for several days? I mean, for a long time. That's what these inmates had to endure. I mean, they would go in there, this door would close completely pitch black, also known as the hole. Now this became kind of a barbaric practice. So later on the state stepped in and they put these clear doors in and this is what the doors look like. That way they can get a little bit of sunlight, but still, it, I mean, this still sucks. Who wants to be in there? But, man, I don't want to be in prison ever. Solitary confinement was quite heavy with emotions. I can't imagine someone spending time in these cells, but I could only imagine what they had to do to get put in there. As I was walking around, I felt as if not just one person, but 20 people were watching me walk. It's a strange feeling when you know you're being watched, but truly terrifying when you can feel it in a haunted space like this. Just trying to find my way out. Folks, have a good night. Thank you for letting me come visit your space. Based off what I saw and heard tonight, there's no question that the Nevada State Prison is haunted. With that said, I'm pretty excited not to be locked up in here alone in the dark anymore. I'm actually glad to be out of here. 